The backhand takeoff is an important component of surfing, a turn that can demonstrate a great deal of style and can be a distinguishing factor of one's ability to set up on their backhand properly. When done wrong, this takeoff can be one of the biggest limitations to one's backhand surfing, as the initial line taken is disrupted, hindering their setup, positioning, and flow on the wave. Whilst many of the same principles that apply to forehand takeoffs, such as pressure on rail, pressure on tail, and taking the correct line, also apply here, body positioning on our backhand seems to be something that we all, at one point or another, come unstuck with. Today, we're going to get to the bottom of this, and I'm going to show you in real time how I apply the backhand takeoff. And not only that, but I'll show you how I'm currently working on it and integrating it to level up my surfing, using it as a great functional tool to improve my positioning in areas where backhand surfing is often limited, and to build upon my style in this unique element of longboard surfing. I also had a pivotal realisation on the backhand takeoff, which after years of surfing has just dawned on me after reflecting on my backhand takeoff this week. We will come to this in the reflection at the end. My name is Ben Considine, and this is The Sunday Glide. So the first thing that I did want to say is that the fundamentals for the backhand takeoff are going to be extremely similar to what we covered in the previous video. So if you haven't checked that out already, I highly recommend you go and just uh, take a look at it. We talk about the differences between our beginner pop-ups if we're popping up in the white water and the shoulder of the wave versus when we're starting to become a bit more experienced, step out surfing up a little bit and uh, popping up in more critical vertical sections. Um, so we're going to step off the, the back of that today and progress on for the backhand takeoff. Really quickly, the last sort of thing that we touched on with that video is making sure that we do pop up at the very tail straight away when we're looking to pop up in more critical sections. Uh, this being because we don't have the time to simply go straight and adjust our feeding, we need to be popping up straight away. So picking up where we left off, I wanted to start with the main considerations we need to be taking for our backhand pop up. We'll begin this by talking about the main areas or the problems that we see and how we can fix this. And then we'll step into a land-based demonstration and then look to apply this in the water too. So the key considerations are going to be firstly, our back foot and our back foot positioning. One of the most important things uh, that goes wrong with our backhand takeoffs and puts people into this very sticky position. Uh, and then after that, it's the body positioning and how to make sure our body positioning is correct. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna start to consider and talk about is that back foot when we're uh, popping up on our backhand. Now, the back foot's uh, a really, really important thing to consider on our backhand particularly, um, because if we place that heel down initially, um, we do get ourselves in a position where we're fairly stuck and we can't uh, manoeuvre or be as nimble or as dynamic um, and willing to, I guess, place the board in the position that we need to. If we think about our heel versus our toe, our toe is going to be able to place weight onto the rail really, really nicely and lightly, and the heel is a little harder to control. It's harder to refine the amount of pressure we're placing onto the heel. So my method here is actually making sure that we've got the toe connected with the board, uh, but the heel slightly raised. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So one of the biggest things I like to point out with that heel coming into contact from the start is that it's a great way to go forwards and be nice and stable, but it does uh, bring us into a tricky position when we're trying to turn in our backhand. What is most likely to happen is that we're more likely to turn by squatting down and uh, pushing just weight onto our heels rather than rotating. So kind of coming into this position here. So a really important consideration there is to make sure that we have a little bit of a, more of an angle on that back foot. So it's not right across the stringer, but we can think that it's diagonally across that stringer. What that's gonna allow for, it's gonna allow for some really good toe contact as you're whipping that turn around from the bottom turn off that pop-up or off that takeoff. We can engage the heel to some degree if we need to, which can be great, especially if we're trying to do uh, quite a fast dynamic turn. 
Um, but again, if we're right across that stringer, if we've got our heel perpendicular to that stringer, uh, then I feel like that's where we get into a fair bit of trouble and it's harder to rotate. So let's keep that back foot especially, diagonal across that stringer and make sure we have more toe uh, contact and a little bit of a heel lift to free that back foot up so that we can rotate that hips and chest around really nicely. Now this leads in really, really nicely to that next point where we think about our body position. So if we start with the problem, the body position may stay facing the other direction. It's always easier on our forehand because our chest is already facing where we're trying to go. The danger with our backhand is that our chest stays facing the opposite direction. For me, I'm a goofy footer, so my uh, chest will stay facing left when I'm trying to go right. And what that will do is it'll place a lot of heel on the rail, which as we've spoken about, we know that that's a bit of a barrier in terms of filtering weight onto that uh, inside rail. And secondly, we're not gonna get the rotation um, that we need to uh, adjust or to bring ourselves around nicely. So if we're trying to turn, we might also just bend our back or arch our back backwards, which again is not gonna be a really good stable position to come into. Often what is coupled with this is people extending or straightening their legs to turn. And that looks like this here. You can see that as I'm trying to stand up and turn, instead of rotating, I'm simply arching my back backwards to try and get that turn to happen. That'll be coupled with that heel uh, weight on the rail and it's a really, really unbalanced way to turn. So again, if we think about combining this as a, as a whole, what we wanna think about doing from the previous edit of the Sunday Glide as well is making sure that that back foot and front foot land in the right place to turn straight away. That's gonna be right at the tail. More detail on that in the previous video. We're then gonna make sure that we have a nice angle of that back foot, a little bit more along that stringer. So if that's the stringer here, not right across, but we've got a little bit of an angle there. And we're gonna keep that heel lift as well to enable us to rotate more at the hips and the chest and uh, allow us our body position to actually rotate in the direction that we want to be going. Really, really important. Now, there are cases where we can use that heel straight away on the tail, and that's for when you're going for a really hard, driven bottom turn. So I think the first video that you saw of mine today in the very start of the edit, go back and watch it if you need to, um, is actually an example where I was swooping off the bottom and I did have heel contact. The vast majority of the time, which is something I'll speak about in the end, I'm actually using either a drop knee turn takeoff or a bit of a modified takeoff in that sense that my heel is up. Okay, so we're gonna check out uh, one of the points, one of the right points here. So I'll be on my backhand and I'm gonna try and I suppose integrate some of that into my own surfing today. I'm going to be using the takeoff hopefully nice and functionally to put myself in the most critical spot as possible uh, so that I can then uh, get into my hang tens and just be in the spot straight away. So we'll see how that works out and then we'll do a little reflection at the end depending on how that goes. Um, let's get into the edit.
All right, so overall, a, a super fun session, and it was really good to get into the backhand takeoff. Um, I think uh, focusing on that uh, backhand takeoff in that session, predominantly, obviously, the drop knee turns, um, they're absolutely my go-to, and I find that they're a really good way to, uh, to delve into a, a backhand wave. Um, and it's a lot of a lot to do with what we spoke about before. So we've got our heel up, and we're able to, um, because that heel's up, we're able to pivot off that back foot, rotate that uh, the hips and the chest in the direction that we want to be going, um, and we don't get that yeah you know, that sticky or awkward feeling where our heels engaged, and um, we either kind of go all or nothing with that turn, and we have difficulty rotating that chest around. Um, so just throwing back to everything we were speaking about at the start, I guess, hopefully that was a little bit of a practical application of that um, and that you can kind of mix what we were speaking about on land uh, with what we did in the session there as well. Um, I was really happy uh, for the, I was really happy for the most part with how the backhand takeoff was going there and how it was positioning me into the uh, nose ride sections. Um, obviously off the takeoff the, the waves were a little slower today so that nose ride section wasn't necessarily there straight away but all the more important for me to be nice and critical and nice and deep uh, for a lot of those waves. So that's where that fade drop knee takeoff was really, really useful. Um, no instances today where I needed to jump up halfway up the board like we spoke about in the last video uh, to develop that momentum. That's just because of the type of wave that we're on, but it's certainly something that we can do. Angling the board down the line and jumping up near the middle of the board to generate that speed straight away. Um, and other than that, I think the, the big thing and what I kind of alluded to at the start of the video, um, one of the, the biggest things that I, I found from today was the fact that I very, very, very rarely uh, use that heel on the tail when I'm doing my, uh, my takeoff on my backhand. Um, again, I, I mentioned at the start that I do use it sometimes for those more big swooping uh, bottom turns where we've got a lot of speed um, and we can put a lot of the board on rail uh, but I find just because I feel more comfortable with the rotations and the refined kind of filtering of that weight onto the tail onto the inside rail that for the most part my uh, my toe is the only point of contact for that board and that the heels actually lifted off. I tried to actually correct that on a few, um, and I'll show a couple of videos here, but I tried to correct that on a few where I had my heel down and I thought, okay, how does this work with my heel down? And really just bulked quite, quite, to be honest. Um, I found that there was, it was really hard to distribute weight the way I wanted to, wanted it to. Um, so I think in bigger waves, definitely using that heel for the backhand takeoff uh, where need be, um, for control, uh, for a deeper or more uh, radical slash dynamic turn, I think that's fine. but. For the most part, for what we're surfing on a longboard, I think that heel off and just toe making contact, uh, similar to what we spoke about or exactly what we spoke about uh, in the start with the land-based practice. So if you do need a revision of that, just head back to that segment of the of the edit um, and that should be good to, to run over for your own surfing. Um, but yeah, hopefully some good examples out there for that today. Um, it was good putting that into practice and I think the uh, backhand takeoff in that way really allowed me to position myself correctly, which I'm stoked on. Um, I think that's where we'll leave it for today. Uh, if you do have any questions based on anything we've gone through today, uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and we'll, uh, we'll touch on those. Um, we have another tip time coming up on this Wednesday, uh, so stay tuned for that. If you do have any questions for tip time, please leave them in the comments below as well and we can get to those in the next video. Um, and then other than that, yeah, we've got the, the Sunday Glide coming up in a week's time. So hope to see you there. Hope you're getting waves and uh, we'll catch you soon. You.